दिस टेन बाई फिफ्टीन कैफे इज मेकिंग फिफ्टी करोर से ईयर They cut like seven thousand five hundred bills a day. Four point five crore a month, fifty crores a year. The great, famous Dharmeshwaram Cafe. Now here's a very interesting calculation. If you measure the area of this cafe, it is approximately one fifty square feet. If you calculate the revenue per square foot, it is more than thirty three lakhs. And if you compare it with Starbucks, an average Starbucks outlet makes three crores a year with a carpet area of five hundred square feet. So it is just sixty thousand rupees per square foot. Similarly, a BMW showroom makes 1.2 lakhs per square foot. The newly opened Apple store in Delhi makes 2.8 lakhs per square foot, and it is 50,000 for Zara and only 31,000 for Dmart. The difference is huge, and I am not talking about a 100-year-old Parsi cafe in South Bombay. It is just a three-year-old cafe established back in 2021. And when I started searching about Rameshwaram cafe, I found each and every video is filled with negative comments. I even found a shop named Rameshwaram Pan Center near Rameshwaram Cafe to have a better review. So how is this possible that a 3 years old cafe with such negative feedback is making this insane amount? Many speculate it's due to paid influencer marketing. I don't know what the truth is, but this is what the founder has to say. See to be very honest, since the launch of the outlet, I don't have a single paid blogger. I have not paid a single person. Another assumption is they are charging a premium cost. so they are able to generate a hefty profit and if you are a person who used to think higher margin means more profit then i must tell you you are completely wrong a high margin does not equal to more profits and this is especially true for the restaurant industry and in this case study i will explain you the fundamental unit economics of a restaurant that truly matters and only if you can understand this concept you can decode the business of any restaurant across the globe and cherry on top By the end of this video I will use programming to reveal whether the 50 crores revenue claim is real or just a hype First let me tell you what is exactly a restaurant industry one side is the food industry which includes end to end manufacturing of food second we have the hospitality industry which aims at serving the customers and this intersection between food and hospitality is what we call a restaurant At its very core, a restaurant is based on the fusion between these three factors: cost of raw materials, time taken to cook that item, and time taken to eat the food. So, if this is clear, let's simplify it by taking two factors at a time. First, let's take cost and cooking time, and it will form a beautiful 4x4 matrix: low cost, low time; high cost, low time; low cost, high time; and high cost, high time. And again, cooking time depends on two factors. one time or one at a time a good example of one time is chicken biryani as the biryani is cooked all at once so the average cooking time per plate is low so biryani falls into high cost but low cooking time but if you see veg fried rice as the ingredients cost is low it falls into low cost low time and a good example of one at a time would be alu paratha where the cost of ingredient is low but as it is prepared one at a time So per paratha time is high and the cooking time can also be a mixture of this one and that one a good example is momo the stuffing and folding are done one at a time but momo is steamed one time so it again falls into low cost high time similarly idli base sandwich dosa beverages ice cream and all types of dal curries falls into low cost low cooking time noodles and rolls falls into low cost high time Mutton, crab, and mushroom falls under high cost, high time. Pizza comes under high cost, but somewhere into medium time. Salad falls into high cost, low time, and a chicken burger falls somewhere in the middle of the quadrant. If this is very very clear, let's move to the next pair. That is price and eating time. And again, eating time depends on two factors: whether it requires a dining or it can be eaten standing. And here is where the magic happens. If you look carefully. A roll takes more time for preparation than noodles but it takes less time to eat. Similarly, biryani and fried rice takes less time to cook but more time to eat. In contrast, momo takes more time to prepare but less time to eat and ice cream takes slightly more time to eat than drinking cold coffee. And this is what the complete overview looks. I know you are a bit confused but don't worry, let's understand it by an example. Let's take three outlets. Biryani box, sandwich hub and a multi cuisine restaurant. 
each of the outlet is open for 10 hours, has a capacity of 20 seats and exists in a location that gets 5000 footfalls every day. So as we already know, biryani is a one-time cooking. So the biryani box staff have to start preparing at least 3 hours before the opening time. And for sandwich hub and the restaurant, one hour prior is sufficient. And biryani being a cooked item, it requires two specialized cooks and two staff for serving and cleaning. And the same goes for restaurant. But sandwich being a dry item do not require dedicated chef or dedicated staff for cleaning. So all the four members can prepare and serve at the same time. Moving further, biryani requires only 5 minutes to serve, 40 minutes to eat and 5 more minutes to clean. Similarly, a sandwich can be prepared and served in 10 minutes and 15 minutes to eat but it does not require cleaning and can be served with a eugentro plate and to cook a full-fledged meal it will take at least half an hour, about an hour to eat and if it's a family, it might even take longer and again 5 minutes to clean. So the total time spent per customer is 50, 25 and 95 respectively and in restaurant language, it is called customer dwell time. The cost of biryani is 120 at a profit margin of 40 rupees, the cost of sandwich is 60 at a profit margin of 20 rupees and the average cost of a meal is 200 at a margin of 70 rupees. And let's assume a hypothetical situation where all the 20 seats are occupied for the entire 10 hours. So biryani box can serve a total 222 customers. So here you might ask a question, how did the number 222 come? I mean if there are total 10 hours and each customer takes 50 minutes then 600 by 50 that is 12 and there are 20 seats so 12 into 20 it should be 240 right? Well this calculation does not work here that's because even if there are 20 customers in a queue but we have only 2 persons to serve and from the third customer onwards have to wait in line for their turn. So the exact number of customers would be 222 for biryani box, 456 for sandwich hub and this number is only 96 for restaurant. So the profits are 8880, 9120, 6720 respectively. If we calculate even further, as the staff of biryani box are working for total 13 hours, so the per hour per member profit is 171 and 203 for sandwich hub and only 153 for restaurant. So even after working fewer hours, charging less amount, sandwich hub is making more profit. And this does not stop here. There are major disadvantages for a restaurant. As a restaurant has a wider variety in the menu, it often takes more time for customers to decide what to eat. This again increases the customer dwell time. Hence, less number of customers are served and also the labor remained unutilized for that time. And further, if a customer decides to add something extra 15 minutes after he gave his first order, it will lead to another delay. And if there are more occupied seats but less orders are served, then it leads to a negative perception. Let me explain you. If there is a cafe completely empty, then your time utility is very high because you will get your food faster but your perception value will be low as you might assume it might not be a good one and you may decide to skip to the next one. Similarly, if a cafe is overcrowded then your perception might be high but your time utility is very low. So in this case also, you might skip to the next cafe. So the sweet spot lies somewhere in the between and this is also known as Goldilocks zone for restaurant choice. But for sandwich, this is not a problem at all as the sandwich can be eaten while walking on the street. It does not matter to a customer if all the seats are occupied or not. So the utility line shifts towards right for a quick service restaurant model. So in short, an item of low ingredients cost, low cooking time and a low eating time can generate a better profit under maximum potential. This term maximum potential is very very important. So if you check our matrix table, what are the items that comes under this category? The list in your left is all the items that have low cost, low cooking and low eating time. And the menu on your right is the menu of Rameshwaram Cafe. Quite similar, right? This is the reason why every big fast food chain is based on these items. And biryani after being so popular, there is no global brand around biryani. If you look carefully at their menu, they don't have an extensive range of items. Instead, they have a limited number of items but with a high variety. This is called a focused menu. A focused menu helps you overcome decision paralysis. Which means, when we are presented with more options, we face more difficulty making a decision. As we have seen in the example, if a customer delays in ordering, it increases the customer dwell time. Hence, 
less number of customers. So for a QSR, less items in a menu is actually beneficial. And they did not stop here. Further, if you check, the core items like dosa and idli are priced less and the complementary items like milkshake and ice creams are priced higher. This is what we call cross-selling. One is upselling. If McDonald's nudges the customer to take a double cheeseburger, it is called upselling. But if they tell you to add an iced tea and you will get 10 rupees discount, it is called cross-selling. So what Rameshwaram Cafe did, they used the core items as driver product and they positioned their items which takes negligible time to serve and very little time to eat or drink at a premium cost so that they can cross sell those items and hence they can almost double their average order value without putting extra time and effort into preparation. People might call Rameshwaram Cafe overhyped or lucky. But in reality, it's a brilliant piece of menu engineering from the founders of Rameshwaram Cafe. One thing for sure that everyone might be curious that from where did I get all this data? Do I have any access to the Rameshwaram Cafe database? Let alone Rameshwaram Cafe, I never went to Bangalore in my entire life. And all this data is not based on any secondary source. Actually, these are the data that I have been collecting for the last three years. And I have also spoken to multiple restaurant owners in my locality. Everything I said in this video is based on the real life research. And if you remember, I quoted a term maximum potential. So in order to achieve maximum potential, it must get a massive number of footfalls. So basically, they have to be in a busy location. But when I went deeper, I was surprised that they have done way more than just being in a crowded location. To understand this, you have to go through another research that I have conducted on multiple highway side dhabas spread across 300 kilometers. And I found one common criteria among all the best performing dhabas that is not taste or affordability and of course not ambience. But that one thing is this median crossover. I think you got the point. At the points in the highway that have crossovers, the footfalls almost double without any extra effort because the vehicle from the opposite side can now have access to this point without traveling extra mile. And these common criteria I've also found among all the Rameshwaram Cafe outlets. All outlets either have a single road or if it has a double road, it must have a crossover within 100 meter range. And not only that, if you see their outlets, they are placed in such a strategic place that it has access to, if not three, at least two sides of the road. So if I summarize this long explanation, Rameshwaram Cafe is only selling those items with low cost, low cooking and low eating time. Hence, they have low customer dwell time. Second comes their menu engineering, where they have a focused menu which saves the time that would have been wasted due to decision paralysis. Plus, they are cross-selling items with low preparation time at a premium. Third is their open restaurant model because they are only serving those items that can be eaten without dining so they do not have to worry about space. And most importantly, after a point, when it gets overcrowded, the perceived utility does not hamper. And lastly, their strategic location. And this golden combination is the recipe for their success. And this takes me to the most awaited question. Is the 50 crores revenue even true? So there are basically three numbers. One is 10 by 15. Another is 7,500 bills a day and 4.5 crores a month. Now let me first explain you from where did this number 4.5 crores came from. Basically, if they are doing 7,500 bills a day with an average order value of 200, it's 15 lakhs a day. Hence, 4.5 crores a month. But only if the average order value is rupees 200. And if you look at their menu, the average cost of core items is hardly 80 rupees. And the average cost of cross-selling items is 89 rupees. So assuming they are cross-selling 50% of the orders, the average order value comes to 125 rupees, which means 9.3 lakhs revenue per day, which is 2.8 CR a month. And this is if, if at all they are doing 7,500 bills per day. So everything relies upon this number, 7500. So let's find out, is it even possible to do so? So they are open for 18.5 hours a day. This means every hour they are taking 405 orders, which is equivalent to one order in every 9 seconds. But this calculation is not that simple because average number of orders is not equal every hour. So I wrote a Python programming analyzing the parameters such as the number of available items at a time interval, the average price of those items, 
and what is the average possible footfalls in a particular time based on a NRAI report and it generated me this graph and according to this graph if they are taking 7500 orders a day then at a peak time they must be taking 672 orders in an hour and in total they have 700 staffs across 4 outlets which means 175 in each outlet and 87 staff each shift so 87 persons have to take 672 orders during peak hours this means one person is serving almost eight orders per hour means one order every 7.7 minute which is not impossible but at the same time not possible for every type of item and according to my calculation if they are doing more cross selling then one person could take five orders per hour which is one order in 12 minutes but at the same time average order value is high else if the cross selling is less then one person can take 6 orders an hour which is one order in every 10 minute but average order value will be low and these are the two possible graphs and they could generate somewhere between 1.95 crores to 2.03 crores per month at most and this is only my calculation what is the exact number only the founders know I, I wish I wish I you know do 4.5 and 70% gross margin <laughs>